What's going on guys? Today I'm going to talk to you guys about troubleshooting down to the component level without any schematic and I'll be showing you guys how to go through a power supply board without any schematics. Most of the time when we get stuff in here we don't have any schematics so we follow a step-by-step -step procedure on how to troubleshoot it from the easiest all the way to the hardest, the quickest to the slowest way of troubleshooting. So follow along as I take you guys step by step on how to troubleshoot down to the component level. All right guys, again today I'm gonna show you guys how to troubleshoot uh, this power supply down to the component level without any schematic and as you guys know there's a there's power supplies all over the place but this particular power supply is from the poultry industry and it actually powers up um, basically a temp controller with alarms in there uh, basically turning on fans and uh, heaters if they needed to but let's take a quick look at this this is a linear power supply and as uh, this is probably one of the most simplest uh, power supply out there, but I'll kind of go through and show you guys how to troubleshoot without any uh, uh, schematic. So we'll, sh we'll go down to the component level and I'll give you guys kind of my thought process of what I do. So if you guys look at this right here, first thing you want to do when you get something in, you would want to do a visual first. The first thing you, you always need to do is do a visual because a lot of the time you'll get clues on what's going on, right? So when you do a visual, you would look at it and see if there's any any kind of issue as far as like burnt component. You can see here, here here's here's the board linear power supply. Kind of give, give you an idea of what's going on. Like there, there's caps. Uh, filter caps here. Here's a big old transformer Here it looks like a bridge rectifier. You guys can see that an LED a fuse a very vari varistor or MOV Again a, a big old heavy transformer and Here's my connector. Here's another fuse here and this looked like a uh, choke coil with capacitors and a resistor here. So very simple power supply that uh, goes into the, uh, I think poultry industry. So uh, when you do a visual, basically you will look at, at the components and you'll see if there's any like burnt, right, burnt components or the board is burnt in any um, way sometimes you have some components that will heat up and it will uh, burn up and doesn't just from doing a visual doesn't look like uh, there's anything burnt on here and look for any components that may be burnt any capacitors that might be bulging and just look for any, any kind of clues maybe missing components somewhere you could tell by maybe looking at at like any bare spot that you might see like I don't know if you, you guys can see it here but every, every one of these is labeled every one of these is labeled so if, if you see that there's a component missing somewhere then uh, definitely chase it back but if you look how see how big this transformer is it's pretty heavy so what one thing you you will have to worry about is like cold solder joints and it looks like uh, the transformer looks like it might it might have been desoldered before, but you you will want definitely want to make see if there's any crack solder joints on here. And sorry for the light there, but you definitely want to see if there's any, any crack, any traces that ha has been burnt, and basically just uh, want to see see if if maybe even the board is cracked. Uh, for a board with a transformer this heavy uh, sometimes the customers would throw this around or lay it or drop it or something and then the board would be cracked and 
it wouldn't be like broken all the way but if you do a, a very good visual on it you'll see that there's crack on here and the traces will be completely open so you want to do those visual in, uh, in like connectors like these you want to make sure all the pins are still there so first thing you want to do is you want to do a, a quick uh, visual and in most cases you'll find like um, open traces burnt components uh, board that's getting heat up so again number one thing is do a visual second thing you want to do after you do a visual and if you can't find anything then you want to take your multimeter out and you want to make sure there's no short on your board from like VCC from your positive to your negative in this case right here if it's a if I see a transformer here and a bridge I know it's going to take AC so I want to make sure that that my bridge rectifier my fuses are not open and then on my my DC side I want to make sure that it's not shorted from my positive to my ground so what I, I would do is I would take my meter right and you see there's the diode setting here I would take it to my diode setting and my meter will come on and basically what I, I would do is do a a component check so I'll be testing my discrete components and discrete components is nothing more than just individual uh, components in their own packages so for example like a capacitor a transistor a diode zener uh, fuse those are packages that or components that are by themselves so basically that's what I, I would want to do and if you have a meter that beeps if you touch it uh, this is basically a short and it's telling me like this continuity a short and it's gonna beep and if it's open it's gonna show OL for um, uh, I forgot what OL stands for over limit so basically there 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 is infinite reading so you can't read anything so that's that, that's basically an open and what you want to do is you want to test these components so if you you, you definitely will have to understand electronics to kind of know how to test your or go through this like a fuse is pretty straightforward right so that would be I would start from the simplest easiest to the hardest so what I would do is I, I would look at okay there's a fuse here I could quickly test this fuse right so basically when I'm testing a fuse I'm just putting it across it like this and as you see is there there's a basically a short so this fuse is good like zero volts right as you can see here zero volts so that fuse is short is good here's a fuse here also right I, I could I could take this fuse out or I could look in the back without taking it out and I could see that it basically come across these two points here so I could measure it across here and it's shorty also so this fuse is good too and as I as I go through there's there's a resistor here, there's a high wattage maybe a two watt resistor uh, I don't I'm not gonna go through the value of it but it's not burnt most of the time if a resistor is bad it's gonna be burnt and even sometimes when it's burnt if it's not open up the reading may still be right on point it's, it, but it's just burnt so it doesn't mean that that you won't replace it you definitely want to replace it but I'm not going to worry about the resistor but I check the fuse I check the uh, fuse here capacitors right I can't check a capacitor with it if I have any diodes I can check a diode but in this case here I have a LED which is which is like a diode and then I have a bridge rectifier, which is here, that's basically four diodes. So I could check that, right? So the way, the way you check a, a bridge rectifier is, let me grab a paper over here and I'll, I'll draw it out for you guys. So in the bridge rectifier, single phase like this one, right, it, I'm gonna, say I'm gonna draw this out right it's a four pin device and it's gonna be a notch here as you can see 
here, all right? There's a there's a notch here. If I look closely on this, even on the board down here, I'll see this is a plus. I call that squiggly line, which is your AC sine wave, and the AC sine wave and my negative. Okay, so negative, positive, and AC input and AC input. So that that's how a uh, bridge rectifier or the package of this bridge rectifier. So what does that really mean, right? If, if you know your electronics, you know bridge rectifier. Bridge rectifier does nothing but uh, rectifies your AC into DC. So when I put my AC voltage into this board, basically this bridge rectifier is gonna rectify or change my AC to DC. And basically this is the how, this basically has four diodes in there. And this is how I like to draw my bridge rectifiers. So I have one diode, two diode, three diode, four diode. This top bar right here is my positive. This bottom here is my negative. So my AC goes in between these two. So I have anode, cathode for this diode, anode, cathode, anode, cathode, anode, cathode. So the part where the, the two diodes, where the anode, which is right here for this one, and the cathode meets, that's my AC input. And again, over here is the same thing, AC input. AC, okay? So, so this point will be here, and this point will be here. And this point could be here, and this point could be here. So basically this is, let's number this one, two, three, four. So this could be one, two, sorry. That would be, this would be three, two, right? Three, two, positive would be four. One would be my negative, okay? So that's my bridge rectifier. I know what it does. It rectifies AC goes in and then it's going to change it into DC. I won't get too much into it, but I'll do it. I'll show you guys real quick since we're on this topic, right? On, on the side sine wave. This is my positive side. This is my negative. AC is going to go in, right? Diode only lets one, only lets current flow through the anode to the cathode, which is forward bias. So when it's in the positive side, it's gonna go through here, through through this diode, right? It's gonna set up my positive there. It's gonna back out and it's gonna go through, let's say, let's put a load here. It's gonna go through this load, back out to my negative, which is uh, to my negative. And then it's gonna go through this diode, right? It won't go through this diode because at this point right here is still positive so this point right here per much is not positive so it, my current is going to go through here through this diode back out to my ac and then on my negative cycle which is here it's going to go back this way now it's going to get to this junction two here and then it's going to go through this diode on up here so this negative right here is get, gets rectified and then now that that negative right here is going to get put here not perfect but so and then it's gonna go up here down here it's gonna skip this one because this is this point right here is positive it's gonna go over here through this diode and then on out to this side over here and then once it does that it's gonna change again back to the positive and it's gonna re keep on repeating and then I'm gonna get my uh, AC output and then here I'm gonna get my basically my DC out which I'm gonna get my RMS but basically that's how it works but back back to troubleshooting down to the component level I know how a bridge rectifier works I know there's four diodes in there so what am I gonna do I'm gonna since this is my meter is on diode the diode mode I'm looking for diode drops so for a diode when I test it 
it's going to give me a voltage drop. That means that when current flows through, I got to put enough current to go through. It's going to be a voltage drop across there, and then the diode is going to um, allow current to flow through. And basically, the meter is going to tell me what voltage it's going to be across that diode. So in here, if I'm going to test this bridge rectifier, what I do right is I'm going to put my red on the anode side of a diode and then my negative on the positive and I'm testing I'm basically testing this diode and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one leave my my common or my, my black lead uh, where is that on the positive and then I'm gonna touch the other AC side input and I'm gonna test this diode so basically I've I've tested these two and then when I get down to the bottom side of it, the negative side of it, what I, I want to do is put my positive here because positive, I need to go, need to put it on the anode side of the diode. And then I'll go on each AC input and put my black or common lead on here and I'll test this diode. And I'll leave the red here because this, this is the same uh, node or same point. And then I'll put this on the AC input. And then that way I've uh, basically went through and checked four of my diodes in, within my bridge rectifier package. So that's kind of how I do it. So if, if we go back to the package, what I would do is I, I would put, I would put my positive on the negative and then I'll check uh, pin two, which is AC input and I should get a diode drop and I should get a diode drop. And then here I should get like a one point something, right? Depending on basically adding the two diode drops together. So I'll check uh, that way. I'm I'm checking the bottom side, and then if I'm, and then I'll, I will put the black lead on the positive side, and then I'll I'll put it put my red lead on my AC input, pin three, pin two, and then I'll, I should get a voltage uh, drop here or or diode voltage drop and a diode voltage drop, and then if I do that, then uh, if I'm getting all my voltage diode voltage drop then I know that my bridge rectifier is good. And as long as I'm not seeing a short, then I'm sh I should be good, right? So what I'm looking for is no short. So if I bring this back into the picture, and again, this this bridge rectifier is pretty much the pin out like here, right? So if I leave it here, let's see if there's a better way of doing it. Well, uh, I'm gonna hang on to no really good way of maybe doing it so just bear with me so what I'm gonna do is put my red lead here and test these I'm gonna get a voltage drop a voltage drop and then like a one point something volts so my red lead is gonna go on the negative and then I'm gonna put my negative on the AC input and I'm not getting anything. All right, so I must have pulled something. There you go. So I'm gonna get a 0 0.7, 0 0.47 voltage drop. We get 0.47 and I should get maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.9. You see how, how it is is changing. Basically, is is on going through a cap and is charging it up, and then it should get up to like maybe point, like I said, point eight or something. But I know, I know, all I'm basically looking for is no short. I don't, when when there's a short and bridge rectifier, is bad. So just keep that in mind. Cause I'm keep on going. It's going to keep on going and then eventually it's going to stop but normally I'll, I'll stop before then because I know it's just charging up and there's no short so I, I typically would have moved on already but as you can see we're up to like 0 0.8 4 it should be maxing out soon because we got a, like a voltage drop like a 0 0.4 or something and 0.4 All right, so it looks like it's slowing down. 
so this this is pretty much good okay so my bridge rectifier is good and so first step is do visual second step is test my uh, my like discrete components and those are basically all the discrete components I've got I I could I could I wouldn't uh, initially go through and check the capacitors yet what I would normally do is once I power up then I'm gonna replace my capacitors anyways because these are electrolytic capacitors and they tend to dry up and they're one of the biggest issues so I would go ahead and replace them anyways so with, with that being said all right, I've tested almost everything there is that I could test on here. Transformer, I mean, I, I can't really, uh, there's not really a good way of testing transformer in circuit because of the windings. I mean, they're gonna read uh, zero ohms. But once I've done that, I verify that my positive and my negative, is, is there's not a short on there. That basically means that on my DC side, there's no short and then I, I should be good to power up, right? Now, step three. Right, step three, I gotta figure out how to power up now. So, first thing again, right, I do a visual. I didn't find anything. Step two, I did my component check and there was no issue. And I gotta move on to step three. Step three is to identify how to power up. And basically, I'm, I'm using the clues here, right? So, if I'm looking, here, let me move this out. Just by knowing electronics, remember I said you guys got to know electronics. So just by knowing electronics, I know that, okay, I've got a transformer here. It's going to take AC. I've got to look from the primary side and secondary side. So when I look over here, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to say, okay, here's two pins here. And then here's two more here and two more here. So this is the secondary, just by looking at it. And this is the primary side, which I'm thinking it is. And how do I verify that, right? Basically, bridge rectifier, it takes AC input two and it's going to give dc so if i have a transformer here more than likely my secondary side of my transformer is going to get stepped down and it's going to feed right into my bridge rectifier so remember that drawing that i showed you guys which is here ac input ac input so if i chase that back i should i should go to the secondary side of my transformer so if if i if i flip it around and the two middle pin here, right? The two middle pin here is gonna go to my uh, secondary side of my transformer. So you guys notice that it was beeping, right? Acting like a short. Well, it's, it's because it's right across the coil of the transformer. And a coil is nothing but you know, windings, uh, wires, which is kind of like a, a fuse anyway. It's gonna test short. So if I go to this pin here, I'll say, oh, right. Let's change it to ohms. It's pretty much dead short. And the same thing here, dead short. Let's go to this side. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So, so I was wrong. This side right here with the two pins is my, uh, my secondary side and the one with the four pin here is my primary side so primary side is going to go in and then it's going to go out on my secondary side you always want to look at the transformer too and make sure that they that there's markings on there and as you can see on here i can read this someone put a sticker that says 230 volts ac on there so more likely it's going to be taking 230 volts ac but even on this transformer if you see the markings on here let me see i can make it focus for you guys come on let's focus here you go oh i think it's reading my meter take my meter away come on focus on it okay there you go oh i lost it 
again, my camera is not uh, wanting to cooperate today. Come on, pick it up. Okay, oh, come on. All right, you see there, 115 votes or 230 votes. You see that, 115 or 230. So this could be a dual input. And output, output should be 12 votes right here. And it, sorry about that, but it'll give me my pinout. So if, I, if I'm if i gonna do a, a 230, I'm gonna have to short pin three and six. And for 115, I'm using each each one of the windings by itself. Okay, so one and six or three and eight. And in this, this case here, if I flip it over, you see how, how the board is made. They pretty much tie the two pins together. So it, that's why it's taking 230. So 230 is gonna go here. And then I'm gonna get, uh, I done forgot, 12 volts. So we getting 12 volts out. And then 12 volts is gonna go to my bridge rectifier. And then my bridge rectifier again is gonna rectify my AC into a DC. So here is my input and I'm gonna have to follow this back. So let's bring my meter back into play. I'm gonna, I like, I like the beat. So I'm gonna chase it back. And I'm, I could do a visual on it. It's gonna go here, through here, to over here, right? And then from there, I can look, it's gonna go through this coil. So a coil is nothing but a piece of wire. So if I, if I do it again, it's gonna go here. All right, so on the other side, I'm not sure where the other side goes, but here's my connector. See here, see that's my connector. If you really wanna cheat, right, you can look here and you can see, oh, there's my ground. And oh, here's my L1 and L2, and, and these are my input. So if you wanted to cheat, which is, I, I, I say those are bonuses, you could, you could cheat. So, uh, basically that's my two input and then my ground is there and if I ohm it out Right, here's my connector again. If I ohm it out, see it goes there About zero ohms. I could do the same thing over here because this is a coil But you see there's a little bit of resistance there. So if I move it to this side over here, which is the other side of the uh, Winding is gonna be short. So let's for grins and giggles. Let's put it ohms, right? It's gonna be like a dead short. If I put it over here, I got about 41 ohms. So my winding is 41 ohms. Okay. So this side goes to here. So that's my AC input. So AC is going to go in through here. It's going to go through a fuse. You see the fuse is here. See input goes here, and then you, you can see you can see the trace going over here to this fuse, which is here, and then go back out the other leg. It's gonna go out through here, through my coil, here, down the other side, and then to the other winding. So that's my my input. So I could put AC here, and then I'm gonna and then I could put it. Um, and then it's gonna go through my my primary side, and then it's gonna get my secondary side. If I put 220 in there, right, I'm gonna get 12 volts out because of what the transformer said. And then I'm gonna have my my DC out. And when I get my DC out, more likely my LED is gonna come on. Excuse me. And obviously it's a red LED, so the red LED is gonna come on. Sometimes the meter. Could uh, is enough to turn on the LED, but I'm not sure if this LED is enough to turn it on. So let's just hold it up this way and see if you guys could see that. Nope, it's not. It's not enough. Basically, if you have a capacitor checker, you could put it across there from the positive, put it on the anode to cathode. Capacitor checker puts out a whole lot more voltage, 
Or if you have a curve tracer, like a Huntron, and you can put it on there, it gives out an AC signal and it, it has enough voltage to turn on your LEDs. But in this case here, right, I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna power it up. So once I ident identify that, I'm gonna uh, power up. And when I power up, what 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 would I want to do, right? I will I would want to make sure if there's any sequence. When I power up, I'm thinking the LED is going to come on. I got to make sure the LED comes on. If there's a green LED on there, I want to make sure there's a, that uh, it comes on. Or if there's a sequence, then I want to make sure it comes on. And most of the time, I would record it. So so if I'm working on a a more complicated power supply or a printed circuit board with relays and and bunch of leds well when i first power up i'm, I'm going to record it so that i know the sequence like oh led uh, the green led came on first and then it started blinking and then here's a red L two other red leds and one stay on solid and one is blinking on and off so if i have recorded that then uh, at least I, i'll know what happens just in case i i blow something up Right, I want to make sure that I fix everything or if I fix something and then the the power-up sequence is different then at least I, I have documentation of what's going on so you always want to make sure you know all that um, and if you guys are like me uh, my memory is not so good anymore so it's always good to have technology on your side and use it so now I'm gonna try to power up but I'm also what I when I'm gonna do is that I know DC is gonna come out but where is it gonna go right because there's no other connectors out there besides this one so I, I need to figure out I, I need to figure out where my DC is going and remember the two inside is my AC so again this pin right here is gonna be positive this pin right here is gonna be negative and let's find out where it goes you can see these caps, all these caps over here, right? These are all my filter caps. And it's gonna go over there. I was in the wrong pin. See how it goes there? This is my negative. And if I look over here, I can see my uh, negative of my filter caps. And then more likely the positive is gonna be on the positive, which is over here. All right, so th those are my filter caps. So when I power up, they should go maybe here yep so this pin is negative negative don't know what that pin is don't know what that pin is negative negative nothing nothing so it looks like this side over here is my negative nothing positive 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 so it looks like the the two middle pin is doesn't go anywhere and this side is my negative and this side is my positive okay so just by looking at i have no schematic have a little bit of idea of how power supply works and know my components and there you go i'm i done went through and have an idea of what to expect right i done i done did a visual did a component check identify how to power up uh, with the markings on the, the transformer i at least have idea of of you know the voltage that I'm gonna get out and how much voltage am I gonna get on my AC on my DC side well th there's also a formula I, I can give that to you guys too if you guys have filter caps on there basically your formula is gonna be AC right input times 1.414 equals sorry I'm running out of rooms room equals my volts dc okay so let's let's do the math on that since i'm not good with math all right here's my calculator if my power supply only goes up to 150 volts uh, ac so let's just say i put 150 volts in times 1.414 I should get about 212 volts okay so let's put this here and let's power up 
All right, so hold on a minute. I'm gonna grab my connectors and find my screwdriver and we're gonna hook it up and power up, okay? So break time. Okay, I'm back. So as you guys can see, I done put my AC input into here, which is my input. And then I'm looking for a DC out on my bridge rectifier. So I'm gonna turn this to AC. I'm gonna monitor this just for a little bit, right? I got zero volts now. I'm gonna turn on my power supply and I'm gonna increase my voltage. I wanna make sure that there's no nothing that's gonna blow, so I'm gonna slowly increase it. And as I'm doing that too, right? Here, you guys can see, this is my connector from, from the back side. You see that? Remember the connector from the back side? And I told you the two outside pins is my DC. So I know my, my power supply, my variable or variac is not gonna go up to 230 volts AC. So I could turn it up to max, which is gonna be about 150, somewhere around there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna monitor my DC volt out. So I'm gonna put it here and here. I don't care if it's, if I got it on the right polarity or not. Let me find a better place. Here. This is when, when it's good to have four hands or three hands. All right, let's do that. All right. I'll switch over to DC. I want to keep on going. keep on going looks like my DC out is fine I'm gonna keep on going all the way until like I get to 150 which is I'm, I'm maxed out on my AC power supply all right so let's check my input again hey about 144 DC oh I didn't even look see my LED is on now see so power is on, check my DC again. All right, let's make connections. I get about 10.5, this side is positive, this side is negative, so 10.5. Hey, let's, let's just for gr grins and giggles, let's do, let's do my, my math again, right? So I actually did my math wrong because I, I did my 150. It's not 150. Remember it, on my secondary side is, is really what my voltage is. So on my secondary side, we can measure my secondary side. Just be careful these things don't touch. Secondary side is on here. I'm gonna go back to AC. I get about 8.4. Right. So now that now that I power up, right, the next step will be to do my voltage measurement, make sure there's no short, make sure nothing's heating up. And 8.4, right? Going back to just for grins and giggles. Remember? AC input times 1.414. And I, I think I let's round it up to like nine volts. So nine volts AC. Let me nine volts AC times 1.414 yeah 12.726 and how much did I say we have over here ten point five one so we're we're off by I don't know maybe two votes so it's still doable, it's not off, it's not bad. So power, power supply is coming on, this is a power supply. The voltage is coming on and uh, there's no bridge rectifier or anything. So there's not really a good, good uh, regulation going on besides the filter caps. And I, I should get my voltage on my caps 
on this side too because it's the same point right so if if i look at my capacitor here i should get that 10 volts something on there so i i know my fuse is good my fuse is good bridge rectifier is good transformer is good because i'm getting the correct voltages all right i've done all my measurements on it so measure measurement on my ac input and then it's going through my my primary side and then it's getting on my secondary side which is it, it stepped it down from 150 volts ac it stepped it down in to the the 12 volts ac and then from there 12 volts goes into my bridge rectifier and it rectifies it over to about 10 volt something and that 10 volt is across my capacitors and pretty much that is going out to this connector here and this power supply is doing what it's supposed to do right so let's power down make sure uh, i don't get shock or you know have it touch something uh, you always want to make sure that you you uh you stay safe so if you guys look my led is still on i have no load and there's no discharging going on so if i measure it all right see I, I i could take let's do it that way i could take my leads out or better yet i got a meter right i could just measure it i have no voltage going in see no voltage going in and my led is still on i gotta make sure that i discharge it again safety first if you look here I still have about six volts. So we can let it just discharge. If, if you have a capacitor handy, right? Don't use your screwdriver or something like that. But if you have a capacitor, I mean a resistor that's handy with a high wattage or something, just touch it across there and uh, you would use it as a load and it would discharge. So that's basically what I would do. If, if, if I didn't find anything, I would, uh, in most cases we don't, find anything but uh, if we do find something it will be in the bridge rectifier side and fuse will be open and sometimes transformers do open up and if it does open up we won't get any voltage to the secondary side uh, so if no voltage AC voltage is on the secondary side then it definitely won't make get to the bridge rectifier right we didn't test the LED because I knew we was gonna power up LED is gonna come on anyways so I didn't check that but caps seem to be holding up fine because it's definitely when i took the power off these four caps is still holding its charge so the caps seem fine so this board looks like it's working fine but as i mentioned earlier i would definitely still go through and change out these caps anyways and just to make sure because electrolytic caps uh, they're they're full of electrolyt which is a liquid chemical and over time with liquid, right, when you add heat, the capacitors get hot, you know what happens to liquid, right? It has to change state in, into gas. And then from there, right, over time, it's not gonna be able to hold its charge when there's no, little to none electrolytes left in your electrolytic capacitors. So that's why capacitors go bad and that's why we replace them. And even if they're sitting on the shelf, these capacitors have a life, what they call shelf life. and uh, if it's sitting on a shelf for a couple years, you definitely want to replace it anyways. But if this board had ICs and and like MOSFETs and transistors and things like that, I would I would go through and check those too. I could easily check those out. Uh, I could turn them on and check those and see if they're they're actually turning on and off. If there's if there's optos, but if I if I had ICs, which is some of the the, the hardest thing to test and it's more time consuming i would pull a data sheet on those and when i pull a data sheet on it i could i could use my oscilloscope and i could check my output if it's like a flip-flop or something uh i, I find and with without having a schematic i'm just looking for any kind of output uh is it right is it wrong i don't know but if it's dead it won't give you any output so if you pull a data sheet on your your digital ICs, I mean, there's only uh, 
if, if it's a simple one, you could inject your signal in using a function generator and you can scope your output and you can see it change and uh, more likely it's good. Same thing with your analog, your op amps. Uh, op amps are really difficult to check. Uh, the reason why is with you not having any schematic, you won't know how the circuit is like. So you don't know what the gain is, uh, what, what the op amp is uh, designed for. You know, is it a comparator? Is it like a 10,000 gain, 1,100 gain? You don't know. So for what, for, or what we do here is we basically just inject the signal in and see if we get any kind of change on the output. And that's basically what we do. Uh, and whenever there's any, there's any question, uh, we replace it because they're fairly, fairly uh, cheap. So that's kind of the step that we go through to uh, troubleshoot um, boards without any schematic and again this is very simple over you know i mean very simple and and you know i know there's not a lot to show you guys but you guys can see if, if you guys know your electronics and you guys are familiar with it you guys know how to test your component and just kind of go through those steps then you, you should be able to find a problem before then so again right you first thing you want to do is you want to do like a visual second thing you want to do is do your uh, discrete component check third thing you want to do is you want to identify how to power up is the ac input is it dc uh, input right ac again you're looking for transformer uh, bridge rectifier, right? Those are given uh, for your AC. And if it's DC, you, you would be looking for like uh, voltage regulators. And you would also be looking for your ICs, right? Your VCC and your ground. You can pull a data sheet on it. Is it gonna take a 3.3 .3 volts? Is it gonna take a, a five? If you have op amps, it's gonna take 12 or, uh, I mean, positive 12, positive 15 or negative 12 or negative 15, right? So as long as you know your ICs, you you can power up from there. So those will be your indications for DC voltage. So once I identify how to power up, then I power up, make sure there's no short and I power up and see if any of my components heat up, if anything blows up. And I'll basically do my voltage check and make sure I get all my correct voltages out. And again, if I have any if I don't find any problems, then I want to go to my, my ICs if I have ICs and I would check my ICs out. And if I can't find any problems, then I'll send it back to the customer with no problems found. But more likely if they send in for an issue, then uh, you would have found it first. And uh, ICs is not normally things that we find wrong here. It's more of your uh, discrete components. Uh, semiconductors um, excluding your ICs but that's basically what we do to go through and and troubleshoot without any schematic hopefully that's been a help to you guys and uh, you guys should be able to go through and do that if you guys have any uh, questions on how to take it further or deeper then leave a comment and I would jump on and answer any kind of questions you guys have. I know this was really brief and I've already spent a lot of time on this video already. So if you, have, you guys have any questions, just leave a comment and I appreciate you guys watching.